Homework 15, Properties of Logarithms, Video 1. In the previous videos, we have looked at... Sorry, I'm looking for my black marker. But there it is. We looked at the definition of a logarithm, uh, the idea that the answer to a logarithm is the power that turns the base into the argument. We looked at some various ways to evaluate some logarithms. Uh, several of them requiring some knowledge about exponent rules. And we looked at the domain of a logarithm. We looked at log and ln being special logarithms with special bases, base 10 and base e, respectively. But in this section, we're going to look at some more properties of logarithms, or rules, if you will. There's four rules in this section we're going to look at. But we're going to look at the first three collectively, and then we'll look at the fourth one on its own once we get past everything we need to do with these three. The properties in this section actually have specific names. One of them is called the product rule, so it's a rule about products. One is called the quotient rule, so it's a rule about quotients, aka division problems. And one is called the power rule because it's a rule about powers. A uh, word of advice for those of you going into calculus. In calculus, you will learn rules called the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule, but they will be in a different context and mean something completely different. Don't worry, these rules will still be true regardless of what you call them. So let's start with the product rule. The product rule is a rule that talks about what to do when the argument of a logarithm is a product, aka a multiplication problem. If you have a logarithm, any base of a product, then you can write it as the sum of two logarithms by giving each factor of the product its own logarithm. So log base b of m times n equals log base b of m plus log base b of n. So it's almost like you're expanding this into multiple logarithms and giving each factor in the original argument its own logarithm. The quotient rule pretty much says the exact same thing, except instead of the log of a product, it's equal to the log of a quotient, aka a division problem, aka a fraction. If you have a log, any base, or any allowable base, of a fraction, which we'll call m over n, then you can also separate this by giving each part of the fraction its own logarithm, it's the logarithm of the numerator minus the logarithm of the denominator. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that the base stays the same when you take these apart. So whatever the base is here, both of these have the same base. We're going to illustrate all of these in just a moment. The power rule says what to do when you're taking the logarithm of an argument that has a power on it. And it's pretty straightforward. If you're taking a logarithm, base b, of some argument, which I'm calling M, but that argument has a power on it, which I'm calling P. You can remove the power from the argument and put it in front of the log as a factor in a multiplication problem. So the log of base B of M to the P power equals P times log base B of M. It's worth mentioning that all of these rules also work in reverse. For example, the product rule in reverse says if you are adding two logarithms with the same base, you can condense them into one logarithm by multiplying their arguments. If you find the difference of two logarithms with the same base, you can condense it into one logarithm by putting the first argument on top of the second argument. And if you have a logarithm with the coefficient in front, you can move that coefficient inside the logarithm as a power on the argument. Well, let's take a look at some real short examples, and then in the next few videos, we'll look at some more in-depth examples. For example, let's say we have log base 2 of x times y. This is the log of a product. All the product rule says is if you have a log of a product, you can split it into two logs, each with the same base, or rather I should say the sum of two logs, each with the same base, and give each half of the multiplication problem its own logarithm. 
That's all. Same thing with the quotient rule. If you have a logarithm of a fraction, then you can write it as the difference of two logarithms with the same base. So log base 3 on both of these. Where the numerator goes in the first log, or specifically the positive log, and the denominator goes in the second log, or specifically the negative log. Now, one thing you'll have to be on the lookout for in your homework when you're doing these problems is sometimes when you expand these into longer expressions, you create a logarithm that you can answer. For example, log base 81, excuse me, log base 3 of 81 is a problem that we answered in the previous videos. Um, the answer to this log is the power that turns 3 into 81. And if you recall, 3 to the 4th power was 81, which means the answer to this logarithm over here is 4. So if this were a homework question, you would be expected to go, wait, I think I know the answer to this logarithm. It's just 4. Last one's easy. It's the logarithm of an argument with a power on it. And as long as the power belongs to the whole argument, it does. The power rule says you can take the power off and put it in front. Keep the same base. So log base w of x to the third power equals 3 log base w of x. So individually, these rules aren't that bad. Uh, in the next few videos, we're going to see problems that incorporate multiple rules, and we have to make a decision. It's going to bother me if I don't put a box around this answer. And we have to make some decisions on when to do what rule, and when we're done doing whatever it is we're being asked to do.